morning from Toronto. My name is John Kyo and welcome to the Future of Food 10 by 10 academic series. In this series, I speak with 10 professors for 10 minutes to get their views on what's happening in the food industry and to learn about what they're working on. And today I'm delighted to have with me Professor Louise Manning from the UK. Hello, Louise. Hi. How are things today in the UK? Uh, it's very sunny today. We're having really good weather for once, so that's uh, really nice. Well, that's wonderful. I'm going to put you on the spot straight away, Louise, and ask you if you can give us your bio. Tell us a little bit about who you are and also your university in one minute. Okay, so my name is Louise Manning and I am Professor of Agri-Food and Supply Chain Security at the Royal Agricultural University, which is in Sarancester in the UK. My whole career has been spent in industry, um, working very much at farm and manufacturing level. And the research that I do at the university is around food safety and how people behave in food supply chains. Wonderful. And Louise, from that perspective, from your vantage point, being a practitioner and an academic as well, what do you see as the key issues that the food industry is dealing with? And what specific research have you been focused on? Well, um, I've been working in the food industry for about 35 years. And when I started, some of the issues when I started are very much the same today uh, with the advent of the Food Safety Act in 1990 and food safety and making sure that food is not going to cause harm is as much of an issue today as it was um, 35 years ago. Uh, the other aspect is demonstrating that the food is what we say it is. So in terms of uh, labelling, in terms of ingredients lists, in terms of claims that we might make for a particular food, none of that has really changed over the last uh, 35 years. What has changed is globalization of supply chains. And in globalization, we are now buying food, sourcing food from all over the world. That means that in some of those countries, the regulatory controls may be less than perhaps in the country to which that food is being exported. That then starts to create a whole set of challenges and means, means that businesses, if they are going to ensure that the food is what it says it is and that the food is safe, that they may have to do additional checks in the process. So whilst a lot of the background theory hasn't changed um, for millennia, in terms of food fraud, food crime. Um, what is changing is the aspect on globalization, but also the fact that food isn't just about the ingredients now, how it is produced, its impact on the environment, um, how we consider things like climate change, pollution, packaging, that makes all the criteria that we're looking to address by our systems that we're creating, um, those criteria are now much wider. So for a technical manager that is looking at how do I design my systems, my procedures, my protocols, um, back in 1990, I was really just interested in biological, chemical and physical, and physical hazards. Allergens, we were really just starting to think about them. When you look at a technical manager today, the list of elements that they have to consider when they're developing their programs has become so much wider. And I think that's a, a real challenge. What we also see is that in many countries, government is stepping back and academics will call that a hybridization of policy. So they are stepping back from the high level of regulation and what is filling the void or not, as the case may be, is a greater requirement for businesses to focus on the integrity of their supply chains. What do I mean by that? What I mean is at the moment we have, uh, we're very much focused on compliance. We develop um, regulatory controls quite rightly to address a whole range of issues around food safety and legality. But then in supply chains, very often for people at one end of the supply chain to manage risk, they will develop a whole set of system standards. Those are prescriptive and they are about market access. So if you haven't um, got the certificate, you can't supply the retailer or food service. But what it means is that we then drive a culture of least cost compliance. How can I write a procedure which has the least, least impact on my business, um, the least impact on the cost of producing that food? That 
is not necessarily the best mindset to have when you're thinking about food safety um, and when you're thinking about um, the quality of your food. What you need to think about is integrity. What are the ethics and values that sit around my food? Very often, some of those are described in um, supply chain standards, but many businesses are now looking at how do we articulate what we feel about the way the food is produced, how it's impacting on consumers, and how do we demonstrate those values? So when we think of the focus on food fraud right now, and in some supply chains, the data would suggest there is a significant amount of food fraud. How do we, in the way we manage our food supply chains, focus more on integrity than compliance? I could develop a food standard today that focuses on everything I know about in terms of food safety, but the bacteria could um, change tomorrow. I could develop a whole set of standards today for microorganisms that are not antibiotic resistant. In a year's time, they could be. I could develop compliance standards for um, a whole range of potential um, sub substitutes that could be in my food. Um, the fraudsters, if the minute they know I'm testing for them, will choose something else. So what we have to think about is that move from compliance approaches to think about integrity approaches where we stand back and we think of how we manage food supply chains with a much wider mindset. And that means we have to think about responsibility more. We have to think about what are our business values, both to our consumers, but also to the people that work for us too. Wonderful. Thank you, Louise. That's quite a lot and quite a broad perspective, which, uh, which is amazing. Uh, certainly moving towards uh, uh, food integrity is something that I see very much so. Now, in the, in the last minute or so, if we can talk about what's happening in the UK. Obviously, we had the, the wake-up call with the horsemeat scandal uh, a number of years ago that was detected in Ireland, but affected uh, right across uh, Europe. Um, but my, my key question for you is, are small medium enterprises at a disadvantage in bringing products to market if there's so many requirements uh, and certifications for market access. So can you talk about the food fraud risk and small medium enterprises bringing products to market? And we have about one minute. <laughs> so um, I think one of the chances if I go back to um, our food supply chain standards, what we're doing is we rather than sit back and say, right, this is my business, these are the people I deal with. Um, this is where I source my product and having a much more holistic assessment of risk. We're developing a whole set of standards, protocols, systems, procedures. So I think we need to work with small businesses to really focus on what the risk actually is associated with their product. Um, and at the moment, what we're doing is developing a long checklist. I don't think that's necessarily the best approach. Um, what we're seeing um, across Europe is this change in regulation from a one-size-fits-all system to risk-based systems. And I think that's what we need to look at. Wonderful. Louise, the time goes very, very quickly in our nine and a half or ten minutes. So uh, in the last 20 seconds, uh, if you're up in front of 50 new scholars, which you are on a regular basis, and they're starting off their uh, academic journey, their scholarly journey, what guidance would you give them? I would say that you have to be true to yourself in research. You have to find a subject that is really important to you. You have to be proud of your papers and your outputs and do something that you'll be proud of. But also you have to um, roll with the punches. Um, not every day is an easy day in academia, especially if you're pushing at the forefront of a discipline. Um, but it's a, fantastic, um, it's a fantastic career to be in. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There we have it all the way from the UK. Professor Louise Manning, who's, uh, who does a significant amount of work in food chain integrity and also in uh, the area of food fraud. So Louise, I'd like to thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Okay, really good to be here.